Hey there guys and gals, my name is Luke, this is Beautiful Susan, welcome to this episode of the Outdoor Gear Review. Today in this episode, this is all about backpacking in bear country. A few weeks ago, I did a video on how to overcome your fears of the outdoors, and I did touch upon the topic of bears. Well, since then, I've received numerous emails in regards to what to do, what not to do specifically. So in this episode, that's what we're doing. That's right, Luke and I have actually lived in bear country our entire lives, and we've never had any issues. And frankly, we haven't heard of anyone having issues. So we're gonna go over the reasons why. For most people in the backcountry, bears are easy to avoid. And the simple fact is that bears really want nothing to do with you at all. In most cases in bear country, when you're out backpacking, you're walking right past them and you don't even know it. Most issues with bears come from being provoked, namely in regards to food. If there's food being thrown all over your campsite, you are bringing them in. You are provoking an encounter. The recommendations that we have for you guys are to reduce the risk of bear attacks and bear encounters. You're really more likely to get hurt in a car accident than by a bear. The odds are higher that you're going to get struck by lightning than you're going to get attacked by a bear. Every encounter is of course unique, so we're not here to say that it never happens, but we want to give you guys some good advice so that it's very unlikely to happen. When camping in bear country, one of the most important things to remember is to not let bears get access to your food. If bears learn that they can get food from humans, that's when they become increasingly aggressive and more bold. Unfortunately, when that happens, typically the bears have to be put down because they can become dangerous. They could tear holes in your tent, in your gear. That's when they learn to break into people's cars and stuff like that. So the key here is prevention. You want to prevent not only the encounter, but also the attraction that you can create. There's the potential to create in your campsite. So there's obviously human food. There's things like pet food. There's cosmetics, chapstick, lotions. Toothpaste, chewing gum. Mints. Of course, there's garbage and even items that you wouldn't even think about, such as your stove, your gas canister, your pot. You're cooking those foods. Things are splattering out, going all over the place you really have to be careful. You have to be diligent. And those little items, like I said, the chapstick, that's easy for me to forget because it's something that you want to have access to and quickly use, but things like that you can't leave in your pocket. All of the items that we just talked about that bears are attracted to, what do you do with that stuff? How do you store it properly? There are two primary options, bear bags and bear canisters. There's all different sizes, there's different types. Some will prevent odors from leaking out. You have to research those. And really, it depends on where you're going as to what you need. If a campsite is providing a bear vault, absolutely use it. It's super easy. You can just lock everything in there. And they're designed so bears cannot get into them. And they're usually away from your campsite. Now, one thing we have to talk about is your vehicle. What do you guys think? Do you think your vehicle is a good place to lock up food? Say if you're in bear country, you're going on a hike, you're parking your car. Oh, you're going to leave some food in there. You decided that you didn't need to take it. Is that a good idea? Yes or no? I hope you guys said no. That is the worst idea. And hopefully Luke can share what a bear can do to a vehicle, share a picture for you guys. Yeah. No, do not stick anything in your car and lock it up. Also, do not just assume that a hard cooler or something like that is going to be bear proof. It's not. It's not, it's absolutely not. Now here's an interesting fact for you all. Did you know that a bear can smell seven times greater than a bloodhound? Yes, and it's actually 2,100 times better than a human that a bear can smell. So think about that, guys. That's insane. Yeah. That's why you don't leave things in your pockets. That's why you use these bear containers. If there's food in your vehicle, food in your tent, your backpack, whatever, they are going to smell it. So keep that in mind. Some of the funniest pictures I've ever seen are of what bears can do to vehicles. Yeah. <laughs> like when they get inside of that car, it's not like they're going to open the glove box nice and neat. They're going to rip that thing apart. Right. And it's probably for that one piece of gum <laughs> yeah. in the middle console, but they will rip it apart to find it. Right. When it comes to bear bags and bear canisters, it's very important to check with local regulations and laws. And that's because not every one of these options can be used in every single location. Some places will require you to have a bear canister as they do not allow bear bags. If you're on the trail and you're using a bear bag, make sure to have it 10 to 15 feet off of the ground and roughly four feet away from the tree itself. That way a bear can't climb up the tree and grab it. Now, when you are in bear country, it is recommended that you follow the triangle rule. Guys, come down here, let me show you something. Okay, so right here, this is where you're sleeping at, okay? Over here 
is where you're cooking at. And over here is where you keep your food. 100 feet apart from each corner. This is the triangle rule. That is a very simple formula to follow. Of course, in real life, sometimes things can be a little bit more complicated than that. You may not have such an area. In all things in life, you do the best that you can. Of course, make sure to sleep, eat, cook, and hang your food in different locations. Also, when it comes to the items that you put inside of your bear canister, your bear bag, you may want to consider putting your clothing in there as well, especially those that you have cooked in. This is especially true when you're in grizzly country. Deciding where to camp at is just as important as deciding where to hang your food bag. For example, it's best to camp away from trails, away from berry patches. If you find fresh bear tracks or scat, camp far away from that. If you come across a carcass of some sort, stay away. It's time to move on. If you come into a campsite that has a lot of garbage in the area, you need to either pick it all up or continue to move on. It's also a good idea to avoid really aromatic foods like bacon or fish. That really sounds like a bear's favorite food to me, so yeah, it does. I wouldn't recommend taking that with you to cook on your trip. In bear country. <laughs> what to do when a bear enters your campsite? So it's important to stay calm, but try to assess the situation. If it's being aggressive, it's probably best to get away and get to a safe area. It might just be curious and exploring and we'll move on. Contact your local authorities and get some help. Now let's move on to what if you do have a bear encounter? The most important thing to remember, folks, is that you do not run. If you run, the odds are that you will be chased and you will never get away from a bear. A black bear alone can cross a football field in seven seconds. They are extremely fast, even with being so incredibly large. It can be startling and almost scary to see a bear, especially if it's your first bear. I've seen bears and I've told Luke, okay, I'm going <laughs> to stay calm. You probably have seen me in videos. There's bears over there and I'm not gonna get scared. Where? Oh, guys, there's a, oh, there's some cubs. There's some bears right there. There's a cub. All right, it's time to go. go. Got to be loud enough to let them know that we're here. <laughs> go nice and slow. They're taking off the other way. It is so important to stay calm and just continue on walking. Maybe walk a little bit faster, but don't run. So let's say you're walking through the woods, you see a bear up on the hill, and it doesn't really notice you. It's time just to keep on going. Do not stop to take a picture. If you pull out your phone to take a selfie, you deserve what is coming your way. <laughs> Sorry folks, but it is true. It's you true. need to keep moving. So let's change the scenario. You're hiking on a trail and a bear comes out in front of you. He sees you, you see it. One thing to keep in mind is that you do not want to stare directly into the bear's eyes. Look at the bear's mass, not at the eyes. What you want to do is stop. You want to talk to this bear. Essentially what you want to do is let this bear know that you are a human. You are not another bear and you are not a prey animal. Holy crap, there's a bear, guys. Yeah, get out of here. While you're talking, you want your arms out. Move them up and down. You want this thing to realize what you are. In most cases, the bear will take off. What you do next depends on what the bear does. If the bear takes off and runs away, it's time for you to get out of there as well. Go the opposite direction of the bear. If the bear just stands there, doesn't really seem to care too much, it's time for you to start backing away. You never ever turn your back to that bear. You always wanna have your eyes on it. You always wanna know what it is doing or what it's about to do. Even if the bear seems like it doesn't care about you, it does. So you need to keep moving. It is not the time to stop. It is not the time to take a picture. So let's change up the scenario and let's say the bear is aggressive. It's making some noises, some growling. It's even stomping its feet. It is very common for black bears to charge. Most of the time, this is a bluff. You need to stand your ground and you need to be ready for what comes next. You have to keep in mind that the bear is stressed out. Everything that it is doing is instinctual. It could be acting out in defense of its cubs, of its personal space, or because it wants food or has food to protect. If the bear charges and acts like it's going to attack you, it is time for you to become aggressive. It is at this point where you fight for your life. This is a last resort mode. That's when you start yelling, screaming, you pick up a stick, you pick up a rock. With black bears, you have to fight. Playing dead with a black bear is a bad idea. The weakness for a black bear, 
it's right here on the face, the nose. Hitting its body is not going to do anything. You want to whop it right in the face, if at all possible. The name of the game is nose and eyes for a black bear. Use any object that you can. Now, when it comes to a grizzly bear, your last resort is going to be very, very different. You want to, in fact, play dead. You do not want to attack the animal because your attacks will do absolutely nothing. These bears are way too big. They are way too powerful. What you want to do is play dead. Lay down on the ground. Keep your backpack up towards the sky where the animal's at. You want to take your hands and you want to cover the back of your neck. Once the attack has started, you stay still. Do not make any noises. Do not move. Once the bear thinks that you are dead and it's bored, it will move on only begin to move once the bear is gone. Now it's time to talk about some defense. So we have bear spray that can be used and that has actually been found to be very effective. Now most people would want to carry a gun and that's not very effective against a bear. You need to think about shooting a bear with a gun like shooting a human with a BB gun. Your body is going to be filled with so much adrenaline. The odds are of your shot being straight on, almost impossible. Yes. So bear spray is recommended to prevent injury to you and it doesn't hurt the bear. What it does, it's a chemical and it's made from hot peppers. You spray it and it kind of disables the bear. It does not cause any permanent damage to them. It shoots out essentially a projectile. It's like roughly 30 feet of distance. Now, of course, there are repercussions from using this, not only on the bear, but on you as well. I mean, unless the air is just absolutely still, there is a possibility of this blowing back in your face and you will feel it just as the bear does. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that you really need to check with local laws and regulations. Not every single location will allow you to carry bear spray, such as Yosemite National Park. It is actually against the law. It is considered carrying a weapon. You can get in serious trouble by having that stuff there. And please don't treat your bear spray as a repellent. If you spray that stuff all over your clothes and your gear, <laughs> you could actually draw the bear to you. It's not a repellent, it's to be used in the event that you are in a bear attack. Statistics show that people who have used a gun against a bear are 50% more likely to get hurt than people who use bear spray, who usually walk away without injury. So to wrap this up, here's some quick tips for you. Make sure to research the areas that you're going into. Make sure to research the campsites that you are going to. See what sort of options are available to you when it comes to food, storage, and so on. What do you need to bring? What should you leave at the house? As you're planning ahead, you can make sure not to hike at dawn or dusk. That's when bears are gonna be more active. You can hike in a group in bear country. And as you're hiking along, it's important to be talking, making noise so that you don't startle a bear and that they know that there are humans coming. Anytime that I've ever had a bear encounter is typically when I'm hiking through the woods, I'm tired, I'm not making any noise. When you tiptoe through the woods, you're going to walk up on animals. If you're going through the woods and you're making noise, you will never see anything. So with those tips there, you all should be able to go out and enjoy bear country just as we are on this awesome day. It feels amazing. You know, bears truly are just incredible creatures and we don't want to see you all get hurt. We don't want to see them being put down because that's typically what happens. Guys, get outdoors. Have an awesome time. If you have any questions for us, make sure to email us. Until next time, strength and honor. Bye. Bye.